Hey everyone, it's Joe Bradley here from Houston, Texas and uh, doing another drive-by recording, drive-by video for you. Uh, I've wanted to take this time today to talk about to talk about freedom. I wanted to talk about what freedom really means. What does it mean to you? Right? That's the question that I have and so in the comments just answer that. Uh, I've learned that freedom Freedom really has uh, freedom has a subjective meaning, and what I mean by that is it means some it means something different depending on who you ask. You know, because freedom is being able be it, being able to have the life that you want, the life that you look for, and stresses don't interrupt, and so. Uh, I just want to talk just a little bit about about my life and and about what freedom means to me and and I'll let you go but when I was growing up I wasn't the most uh, uh, approach well, I want to say approachable maybe I wasn't approachable I don't know but but growing up I moved a lot as a child you know we we moved a lot we were from between the I think the third, second and third grade, all the way up to about the seventh grade, uh, I changed schools at least every other year. And uh, actually up to the 10th grade, I changed schools at least every other year. And there was always, I was always the new kid. And um, when I got to the fifth grade, we actually stayed in that neighborhood. So that was cool, but we were moving from house to house apartment to apartment every single year renting another house renting another house renting another apartment every year and that alone was pretty difficult to deal with just because I was always the new kid right uh, but my dad died at a very young age I was I was six years old my dad died and um, and so he didn't he, he didn't die of natural causes, I'll put it that way. And so my mom became very protective of me. She became, she just didn't want to see me uh, in the same situation as my dad. She didn't want to see, she didn't want that life to happen to me. So she would protect, she tried to protect me from everything. And as a result, her and everybody in my family uh, and those who were close to the family would always focus on making sure that I wasn't like my dad, making sure that I didn't act like my dad, that I didn't, you know, do the things that my dad did. And as a result, I was always being corrected. I was always being, uh, I was always being uh, told what I needed to do more than what I did. And, you know, if I cleaned my room and it was only halfway done, then they would tell me, you know, what, you need to do the rest of the room. And, um, and I, you know, that makes sense. Uh, but here's the thing. Here's what happened along, along the way in life. Um, it was already hard going from school to school and fitting in a new community every year, you know, um, trying to, to prove that I was okay, trying to prove myself worthy enough to be accepted by the people by the kids who had already decided who was and who 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 was and who wasn't okay, and so you know I got into a lot of fights. I got bullied a lot, and then I became a bully. Uh, not not really that bad of a bully, more like an Avenger kind of a person. Where after a while I, I started, you know, intervening for people who um, who were getting picked on. I wasn't that big of a guy, and so I was naturally a target for. Uh, for people to pick on me and um, it wasn't until about I want to say maybe the sixth grade that I realized that I could actually fight and that was when I fought when this you know this guy pushed me and I pushed him back and uh, you know I punched him in the face and he didn't bother me anymore and from that point on I resorted to fighting every single time something every single time something didn't happened the way that I needed to happen. I looked for the fight. I was tired of getting bullied. But I went through my whole life always listening to what wasn't good enough about me. I, 
i listen to all the people um and and i know my mom didn't mean any harm i know any harm i know my stepdad didn't mean any harm but i sit at the table and and they'd yell at me and tell me to get my elbows off the table you know i had a uh a, a arched back or i guess you could say where my chest kind of stuck out and my stomach stuck out when i walked and so uh they would always tell me to walk straight stand up straight you know and um and then i get teased they call me ducks and different things like that hurtful things you know and and i just want to say just parentheses here just be careful um be careful on what you focus on if you have children be careful on what you focus on because those things actually matter and so I lived my life always thinking that I wasn't good enough always thinking that I was extremely unattractive there was no way in the world anybody could actually think I was attractive uh, I had low self-esteem low self-confidence uh, I didn't I, I, I had I had a lot of self-doubt and I just hated myself I hated everything about me and I hated the fact that I had to I, I just didn't I thought that when people picked on me I thought that it, it was because of me you know I thought that it was I mean I believed all the things that were said about me I believed that I wasn't good enough and so every time I do something every time I go somewhere Every time I got, I, I actually get invited somewhere. If, if a girl smiled at me, I thought she was laughing at me. I didn't think she was actually smiling at me because, you know, she liked me. Um, and I found out later on after high school that there were actually more girls that liked me than I thought. But, uh, but I, 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 I had very, a very hard time, an extremely hard time, looking at myself in the mirror because all I saw was imperfection. All I saw was. Uh, was what wasn't good enough and what wasn't right and so I spent the the better part of my of my young my my growing up years wanting to be like someone else wanting to be someone else you know and somewhere along the line um, you know the first boat of acceptance the first type of acceptance came from someone who who was older and he just happened to be in a gang and you know he accepted me and not only me but some of the other friends that I that I grew up with um, and they were all cool my friends were all cool at least you know I, I thought that they were all cool uh, and I wanted to, I tried to be like them you know and come to find out later on in life that they actually thought you know the world of me too and that's, that was pretty cool but I didn't I didn't see that because the way I saw myself was was not good enough and, um, and so my first type of acceptance actually came from a guy who was uh, in a gang. And this was at a very young age, just like 12 years old, 13 years old. Uh, not even that old. Yeah, about 13 years old, you know. He, and I saw that he had success. He was about 19, 20 or so. And he had a car. He had money. He had girls and all that stuff. And life just seemed to be the way that I would want it. And then he said that I was cool. You know, he said I was cool. Uh, and so naturally I ended up going down the wrong route. And getting caught up with the wrong crowd or whatever. And not necessarily even getting caught up. Kind of naturally went there. Because the whole time I was just looking to be good enough. That was the first thing that I ever heard about myself that was good. And... Then somewhere along the line later on, uh, I think I was about 16, 17 years old, 18 years old, and um, and there was another guy, you know, by, by this time I'm running with the, you know, running with the, the street gang and everything like that, running with the crowd and, you know, getting in trouble left and right in every other direction as well. Um, and a guy from church, I'll never forget his name, his name was Brian Head, he, pulled me aside one day and he said Joe you're a leader and I said what are you talking about he said you're a leader man he said you people people don't do things until after after you decide to do it and that was the second time I heard something positive about myself so I started paying attention to that 
And it wasn't until I would say maybe about, well, that, that moment let me know that there was something good about me. That I didn't have to settle for this life because, you know, five years of getting in trouble in every direction, five, six years of getting in trouble in every direction of life, it gets old fast. You know, but all I was doing was pretty much living up to the fact that I wasn't good enough to be a part of regular life. And so I took the, I, I, I just accepted the fact that I wasn't good enough and I ended up where I was. But when Brian told me you're a leader, when he told me that I, that I had some talent, when he told me I had some skills and some gifts and he started pointing out the things that were good enough, it actually woke me up. And and it, it allowed me to see myself from a positive standpoint that yeah, maybe I didn't clean up my room all the way, but I did clean up some of it. And that's how I looked at my life. Maybe maybe I wasn't wasn't the best kid, you know, and, and also just real quick, I, I've never been fishing before. And the reason why I've never been fishing is because Whenever my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, and all of them, whenever they would get to go fishing, they would always leave me at home. They would always tell my mom, no, Joe, I mean, no, we don't want to take Joseph. And then what they didn't realize is how much that hurt. To this day, I'm, I'm 35 years old, and I've never been fishing. And I just thought about that. Just the other day, I thought about that. I was like, wow. The reason why I haven't been fishing is because I was left out. And maybe I'm talking to somebody right now and, and you've been left out of life. You've been left out. Well, here's, here's what freedom is for me. See, money is definitely an awesome thing. And I love every time I get a, an email that says, congratulations, you got a new commission. Congratulations, you have a new team member. Congratulations, you just referred a new. I, I love those emails. I love that. But for me, freedom came when Brian told me that you're good enough. And all of a sudden, I began to look at myself. And instead of trying to be like everybody else, I just started focusing on me. And now, you know, I'm, I'm not, not an arrogant guy in the least bit, you know, but I enjoy being me. I enjoy being able to, to wake up as me every single day. I enjoy, I enjoy being able to laugh when things aren't so easy, you know, when times aren't so easy. I enjoy being able to smile when it seems like I should be crying. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy looking for the rainbow in the middle of the rain. I enjoy, you know, I enjoy me. And since I found me, since I found myself, it's really, and I, I have a, a friend who wrote a poem the other day said her best friend was me, or her, not me, but her best friend was her. And I, I felt that, I felt like, yeah, that's, I'm my best friend. Like I care, I care so much about me that I, there's, there's no one else who, nobody can convince me that I'm not good enough anymore because I found out that I am. I found out the reason why I was so ineffective, the reason why I was so, uh, why I had such a hard life, the reason why I had such a hard time is because I was actually trying to fix the things in my life that I wasn't good at instead of focusing on the things that I was good at. Instead of focusing on the things that I, that I, that I had, you know, I was so busy trying to fix the things I didn't have because that's all I ever heard about myself is what I didn't have. All I ever heard about is what I needed to get. And so I spent so much time thinking about what I needed to get that I didn't realize what I had, the God-gifted talent that I came here with, that I showed up with, as Les Brown said, what I showed up with was good enough to get me through my entire life. And when I found that, and I didn't know it was leadership because be, because I was broken down, because I was, I was, I was viewed as fragments and viewed in fractions by everyone uh, who wanted me to be better. They talked about the things that weren't good enough because they because I was 
i was forced to look at myself in fractions that i never saw the good things about myself and i never dared try to be a leader because how can i lead when i'm so broken when i'm so un when i'm so not good enough and so i found out that leadership was something that i was good at from the beginning and it was because someone decided i'm not going to focus on the side of the room in Joe's life that's not clean, I'm gonna focus on the side of the room that is clean and tell him to focus on that. And guess what? After a while, the rest of my life becomes clean. So I wanna speak this into your life today. If you aren't viewing yourself from the side of the room that's clean, if you've been if you've been measured up, if you've been uh, assessed and, and you've been told that you're only as good as the part of the room that's not clean, if, you, if you've, been, uh, you, you've been valued in a matter of fractions and you've been talked about and you've been told how you're not good enough, you, how come you can't be like your sister, how come you can't be like your brother, how come you can't be like this one or that one, if that's you, then I want you to take the time right now. I want you to take this time right now and I want you to look at yourself. Even if you have to pause this video, I want you to look at yourself, look at yourself in the mirror and and don't focus on the on the on the things that are missing. Don't focus on the things that people have always talked about. That people's all that people has always said, people have always said you're missing. Don't don't worry about that part because you have showed up here with something. And maybe no one else has told you, maybe no one else has spoken this to you, maybe no one else has let you know how valuable you are just the way you are. And so you've been spending all of your time and spending all your wheels trying to fix the things that they said were broken. Well, I want to let you know right now that you may be broke because of all the things that they've said. You may be broken your mind. You may be broken your spirit, but I want you to know that you're not broken. Whatever they've been focusing on, whatever people said was wrong with you, that's not what's wrong with you. What's wrong is that you've been trying to fix the things that they said were, were not fixed. You've been trying to fix the things that they said that they said were missing. You've been trying to find those things, but that's not, that's not, that's not what you were designed to do. And so I want you to look at what you're good at. Maybe you're good at talking. Maybe you're good at listening. Maybe you're good at, at, uh, putting things together. Maybe, maybe you're good at, 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 uh, administration, whatever it might be. Focus on that and watch how everything comes around. And so that is my definition of freedom. That is what let me know that I'm all right. That is what brought me to the point where I am today, where I am right now, where it doesn't matter who I'm around, it doesn't matter uh, what, what what kind of person it is, whether it's someone who's, who's, who's extremely, extremely rich, or whether it's someone who has nothing, I'm still the same me because I know who I am. Because I know that the very person that I was created to be and the very person that I've been from the moment that I got here, right? Because I know that, then I know that there's not one person that I'm going to meet who's going to leave me without being better off than what they were when they met me. And that's not any, that, that, that's not arrogance, that is just confident in who I am. And once you find out who you are, once you learn that the gift that you showed up with, the God-given, God-gifted talent that you came here with, once you learn that that is who you're designed to be, that if anything we need to work on is the things that we're already good at, once you learn that, watch how everybody else's lives turn around. Watch how people begin to flock to you because that's what's happened to me. I can't explain it. It's not the words that I say. It's not the way that I say things. It's not, you know, I can give you all the words that I say and I can give you script by script, uh, letter by letter, line by line, all the things that I've said to everyone who decided to follow me, to everyone who decided to work with me. I can give you all of that. But until it becomes you, until you become you, then none of it will ever matter. And that, my friends, is what freedom means to me. That's what freedom means to me.
i never have to stand in someone else's line to get what someone else said i need in order to live anymore never again i can do this the way that i was designed to do this and i want to i want to encourage you today and i want to empower you today by saying these words that you can too you can too and if you're looking at if you're looking at the fact that my that my clothing has changed. That's just how good I am. I was able to change without you even knowing. Now, actually, what happened was my uh, phone said that my um, the phone said that my clothing, my um, storage was full on my on my phone. And so by the time I was able to get the the other videos that I had on there uh, saved to a hard drive to my external hard drive, then. Um, it's this is like another day, but the message is still the same. This message is so real I don't know when you're watching this message You might be watching this message the very day that I released it or you might be watching this message ten years from when it was that I released it But this message is real my freedom is the fact that I can be me and I want you to know that you can be you But here's what I want you to do. I want you to comment on below and let me know what freedom is to you Let me know what freedom means to you and if uh and if you have yet to find that freedom, if you're still thinking that you got to fix some stuff about you, and maybe you do have to fix the way you think, but if you think that you have to go and add something else to your life, add something else to who you are in order to be a better you, then I want to let you know, no, that's not true. That's not true. No one can give you anything that's going to make you better. No one. Now, people can give you encouraging words and people can give you discouraging words. And I want to encourage you today that you're good enough just the way you are. You may need a coach to help you to become that. And if that's what you need, then I want you to, I invite you to click the link below because we can coach you into uh, being more confident in who you are, into, into becoming a better you because no one can be better you than you. And if you're not being the best you that, if you're not being you, then everyone who's looking for you is missing out. And they're gonna keep on looking until they find you. So it's time that they found it's time they found you. So click the link below and get the map. Lock arms with us. We'll help you become who you were designed to be. We'll help you find that gift that you have. And leave a comment below. Share this message if this message has resonated with you. Um, and talk about what freedom means to you because your freedom may be meaning may mean something totally different than the freedom that I just described. But either way. I look forward to listening to your, to re reading your comments. I look forward to hearing you, and also uh, subscribe, subscribe to my channel because I'm always trying to, I'm always doing my best to give out some value, give out some things that mean a whole lot, and I want to do that now. I'm so sorry for, I apologize for the length of this video, um, but I do, I do hope that these words find you right where they need to find you. I hope these words that I've said in this, in this video, I hope these words sit in the part of your spirit, the part of your life that you need them to sit. And I hope that they, that they, uh, that they sit there like a seed and grow roots and, and flourish up inside of you so that you can be the most powerful version of you that you were ever designed to be. I'll see you real soon. God bless. Joe Bradley, Houston, Texas.